Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of Treading Warm Water. I'm co-host Josh Counter, alongside vegetarian co-host Joe Heady. We are also joined today by vegetarian guest Abby Pouts. We are a very, very proud part of the Bethel Clarion Podcast Network. Some Abby would say so proud that like Sully is even proud. Yeah, Sully. If you guys aren't familiar, Captain Sully, who landed uh, that airplane on the Hudson, uh, I've I've heard through the grapevine that he is actually proud of us. And not only him, but Tom Hanks portraying Sully is very proud too. He'll love Tom that, Hanks. I love you. That is also true. This is a pro Tom Hanks Sully podcast. Abby Pouts, give us a hot take. Um. Okay. Well, I love Tom Hanks. That's not my hot take, <laughs> but. I think as somebody who uses the non-emergency hotline kind of a lot, I think that if you see something illegal happen, you have to report it. Otherwise you can get like it tracked back to you and you will be found like guilty of something or get fined or something like that. I think that a lot of things go under the rug <laughs> And that we need to start holding people accountable. That is my take. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, for one, think that um, we should start actually having babies call the non-emergency <laughs> hotlines. Yes. Start with the new generation. I understand that. Makes How <laughs> often is it? Is it 311? Is that the hotline? How um, it often? depends on the area. How often are you calling this non-emergency hotlines? And what are some of the things that you report? Okay, yeah, can we so, hear about this? Yes. Almost every time I drive somewhere, I am reporting something. I have called in marijuana smokers. I have called in a light out on a trailer. Um, oh <laughs> I have I'm called just... in swerving. I've called in tinted windows. <laughs> Abby, you're just a tattletale. <laughs> I am a tattletale, but I think I'm helping the community. Abby, can I ask, are you like the oldest child? No. Technically, I have two older no. brothers. Yeah. Yes. Good point. Yeah. Josh Tonner has taken his glasses and I'm, headphones. I'm off. in complete disbelief. My headphones and glasses are off now. I, I'm going to take a lap here. You guys, <laughs> Abby, <laughs> I. Used to hold you in high regard, but now I think that oh, after hearing really? you called in someone for like a taillight out, you might be one of the worst people. Also, how did you know people were smoking marijuana? Like, I what if smelt it and I, I saw them holding something? It smelt like mar everybody knows marijuana smoke like skunk. So I'm not, I could smell it. We were in like a parking lot and I smelt it, so I called it in. So it's Abby, how can you do this to other people? Other because humans. Because I'm not doing it and I will not get in trouble because I'm a good driver. I am safe. I do not do any drugs because I am not wackadoodle. So I whack -a -doodle. call those people in because they shouldn't be doing that. And I'm trying to keep my community safe. I have older neighbors. They I'm protecting them. I have called in um ice i've called the city for to put some salt down because i have older neighbors walking on the sidewalk my neighbor next door has to wear a helmet now because she has fallen on the ice so many times so i am calling the city all the time telling them to get their butt down to salt the sidewalks i just am making sure everyone's doing their part in the world <laughs> abby have you like so we were pulling out of Bethel one time and I didn't have my blinker on and I got pulled over and was given a ticket. Did you call on me? Was that you? No, no I don't call like blinkers in. That up. But like I that. Oh yeah, no, I, don't, I would never call a blinker in, but like if someone changes lanes without giving me forewarning, uh, yeah, we'll call them in. <laughs> no, it's, 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 look. Look. it's where you're in a car and you feel like nervous. I, um, also at Bethel will call in people speeding in that area. Or I have also after intramural volleyball games chased after cars that have been speeding by very fast because I am just not trying to die. 
I don't want my friends to die. Everyone looks at me like I'm insane, but I think I'm helping you. (laughs) What is the lowest thing you would call in? (laughs) Probably something at Bethel, because it's really silly, but I called the security office. I'm sure they're just sick of hearing my voice. I'm like, where? Like, I see them driving around all the time, right? The security thing all the time. I do not see them doing anything. Anything. One time we took our, so we live in Heritage or used to, but because of Corona, we're living at home. So we took our screen off of our window because we were on the first level and it was easy to just climb in our window if we had like groceries. And so oh, we, did you call security on yourself for doing that? No. So security drove by and we thought we would get in trouble because we were like, this is probably wrong, whatever. But he just goes, oh, is that easier? He rolls down the window and's like, great idea. Is that easier? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, it's really great. Thank you. Like, they're not doing much. And I feel bad. Like, I don't want to disrespect Bethel security at all because I love security and police officers and all that good stuff. I respect them so much. That's why I give them tips, right? So you're bribing the security (laughs) officer. No wonder he didn't pull you over or yell at you. You're you're giving him five bucks on the side. Or is Um, it like tips like, hey, brush your teeth twice a day? No, like I'm just saying like, oh, this person's speeding. Here's their license plate. Like Give them a ticket or contact them. Yes, I do license plates. Abby, like, I'm oh not my God. And car type from and color. The moment, from the moment this take started, <laughs> the bottom of my mouth has not touched the top <laughs> of my mouth. I am utterly appalled right now. And really? I, I feel like your reasoning behind doing this is I, I think I've heard you say it two or three times now that you don't want to be complicit in someone else's crime. Is that a big fear of yours? No, it's not that. I just have anxiety and I'm a type six. So I'm thinking about like, oh, like if they're swerving, like what if they are under the influence and they get to keep going on the road and they hurt somebody? I think that from my personal past experiences that I feel the need to call things in if something doesn't look right because I'm scared of what it will lead to. Do you feel good when you see somebody pulled over? Question no. from our producer, Sam Mulberry. No, I never feel that way. Like, I'm not like, oh yeah, get them. But like, I'm not going to call somebody in who's like, who I can tell is speeding on the highway. I'm going to call somebody in at Bethel when there's people walking around all the time at night and... <laughs> and just zooming past me so would would you ever consider like a a late hours career as a vigilante i don't think so (laughs) what would abby's what would abby's superhero name be the meatless wonder (laughs) the meatless wonder (laughs) no i i legitimately i think she would just be called 311 (laughs) <laughs> that's a cool name her superpower is just dialing her <laughs> her phone <laughs> somebody's like robbing a store she's like hold on one second and she's like 311 and they're like oh please stop no no because you're robbing a store that's way too way too right, high level of a crime for her it's like if she sees someone turn on their car and one of their three taillights are out and they're leaving bethel where almost everyone's poor and can't afford to fix their brake light all the time she's like i got you shouldn't so, have tried to pull that one today you picked the wrong <laughs> parking lot bub so that, one. that wasn't at bethel the trailer light was on i-94 going west and we <laughs> do, do you have a log of all these calls that you've made? No, I That's wish I did. Super specific. She writes it in a journal. <laughs> so, no, I just remember it because it was rush hour and I was going to my cabin and I have a bunch of people in my car. And personally, I have a trailer. I know how to back my car up on and connect it to a trailer hitch. Like, I, I nice. just thank you. Thank you. So I just know how to do that. And I know I check my trailer lights 
every time. My dad does it. My uncle does it. We all check because that's a safety thing. If your trailer covers your car um, backlights, you don't know if somebody's braking. And like, obviously you can tell with the distance, but if someone needs to slam on their brakes, like I could run into that trailer. So I just find it to be like an issue. And he knew the trailer light was out because he stuck his hand out the window to show that he was blinking, like turning his turn signal on. So I knew that it was not like, oh, like it went out on the drive or something. It was, he knew about it and he wasn't getting it fixed. And you still called this person in? Yes. (laughs) What if you didn't have time or money to go get it fixed? (laughs) He was doing- Well, then you can't be driving a trailer. I don't want to- How can you treat other people like this? What do you mean? So I have a personal take on this because all the basketball hoops in Invergrove Heights were recently taken down. And not the hoops, but the rim, because I'm pretty sure it was at one of the parks I was at because me and my brother, who have been quarantined together, were playing. And I think somebody saw us playing and thought, oh, that's breaking rules, and then called in, and now all the hoops were taken down. So I'm just so against this right now, because I feel like I that's the type that. of thing that I would need to do. That's, I wouldn't do that. It's always only if somebody's in danger. So it's a lot of things that's on the road. And my neighbor, who is... 80 years old I don't want her to not be able to walk on the sidewalk without like a fear of her something terrible happening to her so I guess it's just my judge of what I think could possibly happen based on my experiences but no I'm not going to be like oh they're not quarantining and call them in because I don't know I just if you're with your family I don't think that's an issue but I wouldn't do something like that it's usually just road things or something I've experienced where I think it's dangerous. Josh, <laughs> but while we go around, I'll give you, I'll give you the first comment. You go ahead. No, <laughs> that's it. I'm done. Yeah. Me myself, I, I, I can't see the merit in this take. I understand you're worried. That makes me feel, you know, great because I feel like you're a great person, great friend to have you. You're worried about your people in your life, but at the same time, like, come on. This is crazy. That is crazy. (laughs) So I still think that there should be some consequences. I feel like you're an accomplice if you don't report something sometimes. For certain things. I mean, there needs to be a level and stuff like that. I'm not just saying like, oh, if you see somebody speeding, you're going to get in trouble too. (laughs) Nothing like that. Just something like crazy. Because I just don't, I think people let a lot of things go, which obviously a lot of people do. So thank you so much for having me on. (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm so happy we saved this take (laughs) for the recording session. Because I don't think I would have been able to get through the other two. (laughs) Counter, do you have anything you'd like to say before we close out? I I can't. I don't. This is terrible. I don't know how you can do this to other people. I feel like you think you're doing the good the good work, but you're not doing the good work. You're you're doing the opposite of the good work. You're hurting people instead of helping them. And you're not going to be called an accomplice if like if you drive by a parking lot and you smell some pot and you call it in, it's not going to be like, well, if I don't call it in, I guess I'm going to jail. You're not going to be an accomplice like that. That's not how it, that's not how the law or the police work. I feel like the police have been given a lot of training to do their work. And I feel like we should let them do their work on their own without help from us. Well, maybe, that'll do maybe they rely on maybe, right here. Let me let me clarify that. I think that sounds a little bit too anti-police. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna backtrack that. He have called the police to check that out because you're worried about her, and you know what? With the ice thing on the sidewalks, more power to you. But also, you could just take care of the ice yourself. We're gonna end on that great point from Josh Towner. Uh, 
that'll do it for this very shocking and eye-opening to the insides of Abbott Potts' mind episode of Treading Warm Water. Whether you're watching on YouTube, listening on Spotify or iTunes, we appreciate your support as always, as we are so proud to be a part of the Bethel Clarion Podcast Network. We'll catch you guys on the next one.